this off.
ਤੋਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਰਾ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਜੀ
so many books now. We have so many particles now. But at the same time, that is one of the causes of, for example, global warming or, in a sense, perhaps, of human behavior. So now is the time for us to reconsider. I This one, this one, can you see, okay. So we, we think that now, now it's a time to reconsider the production oriented approach and to modify the life-oriented approach. Uh, then, uh, what is life-oriented? So far, in production-oriented approach, we, our target was bigger and more effective production. We should pay more, much more attention to sustainable production. What kind of life is ideal? Economically rich, right? Everybody want to be richer, but in life-oriented, more secured life. Secured means uh, in Japanese, anzen anshin Secured, maybe much more important than rich. And uh, in production-oriented approach. Everybody try to be the winner. There is a competition. Once we win, we won. We can be the winner. We can get much more income. But there is a winner. That means there is a loser. And the competition is the basis of the principle of the society. But now we have to think win-win relation. And here, win may be a little bit gain. Not so large as we can say here, but win-win. Then win-win with whom? It can be with neighbor, between you and I. It can be over the generation, the present generation with the next generation. It can be between human society with ecosystem. So far, we deteriorate natural environment. That means we may win over the ecosystem. But that cause is a problem for us too. So we, we can use, we use ecosystem, but that intervention must be some positive, or at least not so serious negative impact to ecosystem. That is win-win situation. So <coughs> now in the Global Theory Program, what we are thinking is what is life-oriented technology? Actually, in the global theory program, we are thinking of technology, of like institutions, like organizations, a lot of things. But today, I just focus on technology. So what is life-oriented technology? That is a key question to which we have to answer in the global theory program. Uh, we Start, we started to consider this question uh, nearly two years ago. And uh, we have two years more. Now it's uh, just uh, on the half year. 
and uh, what we can say now? That is a big question for me. We don't have answer yet. We understand that now is the time for us to divert, convert production oriented to life oriented approach. But then what is the technology necessary for life oriented life? But uh, so far, we did consider uh, technical innovation during the last several decades and uh, found uh, most of them are production oriented. One example is green revolution. Green revolution. Green Revolution in Japanese, Midori no Sakume, Midori no Sakume. Green Revolution is a uh, technology disseminated, developed and distributed in the 1960s. That is a uh, technology in, in for agriculture. And uh, uh, they develop new cultivar, new variety of wheat, wheat and rice. These are the major food of the majority of the people in the world. And uh, that is, uh, uh, how can say, that is a technology which achieves higher productivity higher yield. But for that purpose, we need more fertilizer, chemical fertilizer, more pesticide, insecticide. In short, it is a kind of high input, high, ret high return. That is a uh, uh, critical characteristic of the new technology provided by the green revolution. And uh, it also need good water condition. So we have to develop irrigation system, irrigation drainage system. So that makes the food production much more effective. And uh, during the last several decades, the population in the pop in the tropics, jump up. How did we feed them? How did we provide enough amount of food for them? It's because of this evolution. We can develop new technology for agriculture. So even the population growth is very sharp. Starvation, food shortage, it's not so serious for us. So in that sense, we have to appreciate the technology developed by Green Revolution. But uh, this technology, in order to use this technology, in order to adop adopt this technology, farmers need a lot of money, a lot of investment. They have to develop their field for better water, water condition. They have to buy fertilizers to apply for the crop. So this technology is distributed only among the rich farmers, only among the advantageous area. And what happens to the poor farmers? or less advantageous area. They, can, they cannot use this technology. So the productivity gap become big and big. They become relatively poor and poor. So 
So this is good in a sense, but also it is true that uh, by this technology, disparity among farmers becoming big and big. That is one of the uh, production-oriented technology. Second, information technology. Now, I guess you do every day you use internet, email, and uh, if you cannot access to internet or email. to you, <laughs> I don't know, but, and, uh, and through internet, you can get, you can collect any information, any knowledge, which is indispensable for your life. So it's very convenient, it, it, it changes your life. How many people in the world can access to internet every day? It's without saying, and uh, I don't know it exactly, but now the information gap is becoming bigger and bigger. If you see only in Japanese society, among, the, uh, among, among, among Japanese people only, it seems that everybody are getting benefit from internet in information technology equally. Yes, it must be true. There may be somebody who don't use internet, but it is not because they are not, he, he is not able to do it, but he don't like it. But if we see the world, if you go to Southeast Asian country, yeah, of course, true. In urban, uh, urban cities, like uh, Singapore or uh, Manila or uh, Kuala Lumpur or Bangkok, everybody is using it. But once we go to rural areas, so many people has never touched a uh, computer, never use, uh, never access to the internet. And now, so the information gap is becoming bigger and bigger. And uh, of course, I have to say that information technology is sometimes equally benefit, provide benefit to all the people. But in a sense, it is creating this big discrepancy, this big uh, inequality or uh, discrepancy among the people. Medical science. Uh, I know medical science also. Now the uh, average life time, life expectancy of Japanese people, female, eighty eight. Seven or eight, male, eighty-two or three. How come? One reason is that we are getting, we are enjoying good medical service. Uh, so many new technologies are developed in the field of medical science. Now, if our blood, blood. Deteriorating, we can develop artificial tool and replace it with my uh, with my organ. Uh, IPS cell may create something new organ for us. We can we can exchange our organs now exchange uh, it's becoming exchangeable. And but uh, how can I say? 
this kind of medical service is available only to selected persons, not all. Not all. And of course, in the future, we may be able to, or everybody may be able to enjoy this kind of most advanced technology. But so far, what we can we, we see now is some technical development provide benefit only for selected persons, not all. And that is causing some kind of serious social conflict. You know that uh, during the last several months in Bangkok, Thailand, there is a big movement against the present government. And uh, I mean, there are so many background behind that movement. But uh, one of the serious, one of the significant cause of that movement is serious social conflict between the rich and poor among the Thai society. <coughs> okay. uh, so uh, that is what we are thinking now. We have to, what our understanding is that now we, our technology development is so much production oriented, production oriented. And uh, we don't say that production oriented is bad. Production oriented technical innovation has a good aspect. But at the same time, we have to consider the weakness of production oriented techni techni uh, technological development. And we have to also, we, we also have to think about life oriented technical development. And uh, I want, and uh, today I want to use Palalaba growing as a, as a material for the discussion. Palalaba, uh, Palalaba is a gong. Material of rubber. Rubber, I think. No. It's a latex of paralaba tree. Latex. This Akino tree. And uh, actually, there are two types of paralaba growing technology in Southeast Asia. One is called rubber garden, the other is called rubber forest, or sometimes we say garden type and forest type, or rubber forest is sometimes called jungle rubber. Uh, this is rubber garden in Biao, Sumatra Island in Indonesia. This is rubber type. Counterpart in Biao, who is a lecturer of Biao University. This is Dr. Obama. He's, he's a migrant from Java. And uh, he developed about two hectares of rubber garden here. This is rubber tree. This is too young. This is two, three years old. We cannot cut it yet. But you can see, rubber trees are planted with regular spacing. Regular space. This is the mature rubber tree. And this is rubber garden type, garden type. And uh, Every morning, they, they collect the rabbit here, collect it here. So every morning, they 
just in one side. And there is no productivity. And the animal production is not. This part of the system that this is modern technology, reactive technology, and productive technology. Okay. This one, rubber forest. That is irregular spacing mixed with, with LED. Uh, at the beginning, the same. At the beginning, the same. new trees come out. Farmers don't build. They just mend it. Or sometimes they select it. So even very this year, some trees are coming out naturally. And they take care of the family plant. And after seven years, the tree starts production. And some trees Production and reproduction uh, or we can say that reproduction process is embedded in production process. And so that is rubber forest ecosystem in a sense. It is much more complicated than this one. It's very simple. Rubber forest is in, in rubber forest type, uh, the initial and the production stages, or in other words, production and reproduction stages, co irrigate in the same system. And uh, another important characteristic of rubber forest type is that uh, here, in case of rubber garden, now we talk about farmers, farmers who depends on rubber production. This time, 
The livelihood of the farmer goes down. Uh, so, okay, two types of paralaba growing. I summarize uh, rubber garden, it's regular scraping. Scraping is regular, but in, in rubber forest, regular. Rubber tree, rubber garden, monoculture. But the uh, rubber forest is mixed. Crop care uh, is uh, in standardized in rubber garden, but uh, less or no care in, in forest side. Weed, there is almost no weed in garden type, but many weed in forest type. And uh, I didn't talk to this about this. And uh, about farm size, the size of rubber, rubber, rubber garden, rubber, rubber farm. In case of rubber garden type, some, some, some farm is rather small, but some large farm is rather big. But in case of forest type, mostly it's small type. And the management body also. <coughs> in case of rubber garden, some are small holders and some are estate but owned by the big company. But in case of rubber forest, it's mostly for by small holder. And the land productivity, production, is higher in this rubber area. Okay. So of course this is key key point. We hope we want to produce more latex from for unit size of one. Uh, so So the question uh, evolution or adaptation evolution or adaptation that is what we have to think uh, evolution simpler adaptation puts your From this table, uh, we may think this is lower, this is higher. So technically speaking, this is much better, much more advanced. Nutrient, the solarization more effective, more 
historical than, than, than to fight for the environment. It's just clear that we can, we can, we can use standardized technology that will clear us. Mm. Bridges that completely dry with rubber trees and the no wind has not been touched ever. And uh, this technology can be applied not only to large carbon, but, but also to small parts. technology can be used from small soda to big land ocean. So <coughs> in a sense, or, or I should say, so it is true that the most of the agricultural scientists think this technology is much more superior than this technology. And this technology kind of dominant of indigenous technology. Dominant is an English word, mucolinous. Dominant or anyway, this technology is going to disappear in the near future and all is replaced by this technology. That is generally said so. And uh, I want to raise question whether this is evolution. Evolution means replace uh, rubber <coughs> forest is replaced by rubber 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 garden. This is the evolution or adaptation. Uh, adaptation is rubber or how do you say? Or we can say it is. Uh, Modernization or we can say diversity. And so in order to answer this question, I visited Indonesia. I visited Indonesia this year and the last year. I observed uh, rubber forest in two areas. One is Yawa. Sumatra, second is Jambi in Sumatra, and this is rather rural, this is hilly area. And another place is uh, Mangao, West Kalimantan. And here we see both rural and uh, hilly area. Uh, by termite. Termite is Shiroari. And uh, at first I didn't know what it is. I, I thought that it is just die because of the old age. But I gradually recognized it's because of termite. This tree is not so old yet, but and it it produces it is producing latex. But if we carefully see the root zone, there is termite, and we are collecting the termite samples. And uh, we ask farmers, and once the tree is attacked by termite. They are sure that uh, within one or two years, the tree will die. And uh, we ask them, why you don't you don't protect trees from termite attack? Uh, they say that uh, uh, it's impossible. It's impossible. Of course, if they use uh, very expensive chemicals, they may be able to. But uh, it's 
it's not so popular there. And they say that it's about 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 five percent of rubber trees in their park are attacked by termites every year. But they say that it doesn't matter. New trees are coming out. It is just replaced by new trees. They have this great mechanism. So in, instead of using rather ex expensive chemicals, they keep it natural. Uh, this is also attacked by termites. This is very small tree. So termite attack is not depends on age of tree, even though it is young, even though it is old. It seems it's kind of random. Uh, this is uh, this is in West Kalimantan. Uh, in, in in West Kalimantan also, we also see many trees attacked by termites. It is, it is bitter tree. Once tree is attacked, termite, termite eat bark of tree and make made it nest. So it become like this. <coughs> this is also termite. And the tree they are producing but the production here low and low, and within one, two years, it will die. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, how to say, in case of small, uh, in, in case of termite, we found that termite is a kind of inevitable risk for rubber tree. And uh, and uh, and but the how to say the threat is big but not so serious. The number of trees attacked by termites just five percent. That means ninety five percent trees can survive. If they have to protect their tree from termites, they have to apply chemical for all the trees in order to save just five percent of trees. And then they think that, okay, 5%, let them eat, let termites eat it. And th instead, they will produce, they, they will repair the next generation simultaneously. That is their strategy. This is, oh, this is in West Kalimantan. This is seed of rubber, rubber tree. So it, it fall down on the, on the ground surface. And uh, new, new germination comes out. Uh, but, uh, the, but we cannot eat it, but it's rather delicious for wild pig. There are so many wild pig this area. And the wild pig loves it, love it, love it. And they like not only seed, but also young seedlings also. So, uh, how can I say, there, there is wild pig. They cannot expect natural regeneration, natural germination, because wild pig eat all the seed. Wild pig, if some seeds survive and new germination comes out, it, it wild pig also eat it. So what they are doing? They have to, anyway, anyway, they have, they need new generation every time. So they make a kind of nursery of rubber tree. That is new another technology for them. They collect seeds from the rubber forest and plant it in 
come from and they make sense. Not wild pigs tumbling to eat, eat it. That is their strategy. This is, this is in town. And in, in, in some areas, there is no wild pig. So we can, we can expect natural de degradation. But in some areas, particularly in hilly areas, there are many wild pigs in the forest. And wild pigs come to rubber, to rubber, rubber forest to eat rubber seeds and rubber seedlings. So they have to prepare this kind of thing. Uh, and the seedlings also, if it is too small, it is eaten by, 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 by wild pig. So they have to use this size of seedlings. If seedlings is go up, up to this size, wild pig cannot eat it. Planting seedlings. Okay. So, uh, so far, I observed uh, forest uh, rubber forest in three areas: West Kalimantan, Diao, and Jambi. And uh, what I found is that uh, these are all rubber forests. What we found is that what farmers are thinking are quite different. What, are, how do I, what, what farmers are paying attention for taking care of their garden is quite differ, different. In lowland of West Kalimantan and Diao, their main concern is termite. Termite is the biggest threat for them. And uh, so what they are expecting is natural de de generation of rubber seed. They cannot protect seed from termite. In Jambi, it was wild pig. In case of Jambi, it is located near the mountain, near the hill. There, there are so many natural forests nearby. And there are so many wild pig. And they come to eat seed and seedlings in the rubber garden. And again, they cannot protect wild pigs comes in, eat their, their seed and seedlings. What they can do is to grow up seedlings in the separated area like nursery, and transplant it. In West Kalimantan, in the hilly area of West Kalimantan, fungus, fungus is nankake, kinna, akabi akabi, kabi, fungus, kabi. Fungus is the biggest threat. It's something similar to termite. They cannot protect seed from fungus. And again, what they expect is natural de degeneration. And so what we found is that uh, rubber forest technology is not standardized. Every place has different problems, different risks. And they try to overcome it by different approaches. That is uh, one point. And the other point is that, uh, but surprisingly, productivity of rubber, latex, are almost the same in all the areas. It's between 500 to 100, 500 and 1,500 kg per hectare per year. There are no big differences. The condition is quite different. Like here, 
we, we talk about water conditions. Water is different, soil is different, stress, biggest risk is different, but the productivity also the same. Farm size, about two to, two to three hectares, no much differences. So even though the, the, the set of the te technology may differ, but outcome may be almost uh, quite similar. Uh, so I summarize rubber forest, rubber forest technology, how small holders, not the scientists, not the I can say uh, large scale private sector, but the small holders see. First, it is site specific testing. Their farmers are also concerned, have the concern that how to do it at their field. And second point, modern technology selectively adopted. They have their own technology, but they don't refuse to introduce new technology. But they don't accept all the new technology. They always try to introduce, but selectively, not all. <coughs> Third, land productivity land productivity, not the dominant criterion of technology development. They, are of, they have concern on productivity, yes, true. But that is not the unique criteria for them to select technology. And uh, big diversity in productivity. As I said that uh, in Gambi, Diao, and West Kalimantan, I visited several farmers there. Among farmers in niche area, there is a big differences in productivity. But if we see all the three areas, there is no significant differences in productivity. That means uh, productivity doesn't depend on the macro condition, such as the environmental and socioeconomic setting, but depends on a kind of the household condition or their specific field condition that is more significant than the macro condition. Uh, ICRA, International Center for Research of Agroforestry, ICRA, ICRA, the headquarter is, lo is located in Bogor, Indonesia. It's an international center for agroforestry, including Raba. And uh, it has an office in Gambi, Sumatra. And uh, I will visit there. Because ICRA has a more than 10 years research project of rubber growing. Try to develop new rubber growing system, like, like like ga it's, a, it's a modified garden type system. Garden type system is a monoculture rubber, but they try to mix it with some other seeds or crop. And uh, so, so it, of course, ICRA is the international center, so there are so many prominent scholars there. They think, or oh, it must be good model for the farmers to grow rubber. And uh, Ratna-san, Ms. Ratna, she is a field officer 
to stay in Zambia for, I don't know how many years, maybe 10 years, to introduce, to, to try to disseminate the rubber growing model to the local farmers here. Uh, and and uh, what he said, what she said, <coughs> we have worked here since 1995. We propose comprehensive rubber garden systems. They call it RAST1 and RAST2. And, uh, and set up 22 demonstration plots to disseminate the new technology to the local farmers. So, and we, uh, actually I visited several demonstration plots. Yes, it's good, well managed. Looks very good here, seems high productivity. But neighboring farmers who had the field nearby demonstration farm are not interested in the technology they just partially introduced some component of the technology, such as clone seedlings and chemical fertilizer application. Clone is a, uh, clone is clone, you know. You, you know, clone is, dup uh, du du duplicate, duplication. So it's a it's a piloting seeding. Uh, so clone seedlings, some farmers start to use it. Chemical fertilizers, some farmers start to use it. But other technology, they just they just neglect it, even though ICRAF try to spread it into local farmers. And, uh, and I have to say that. Um, the more than 10 years challenge of ECRAF was not so successful. And, uh, uh, I can say. We have to say that uh, it's not because of ECRAF, the, the, the scientists in ECRAF is not so bad. Or you can say it's good. They are making a lot of effort, try to develop the most suitable system, rubber growing system, to the area, in the area. And they spend a lot of money to establish demonstration plots in the areas to show new technology to the farmers. And so the, their, 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 their idea in terms of science, idea, and their how say, outreach method seems not so bad. But still, farmers don't accept it. And uh, uh, it's, we cannot, so it's a serious question for us. We are always trying to new technology based on our scientific understanding. And, but most cases, it is not accepted by local farmers. How come? How can we overcome this? Uh, actually, I don't have question, our answer to that question. But at this moment, I am thinking that uh, our idea, the idea of scientists is too production oriented. Uh, and uh, so we suppose that uh, the op optimization of production is the ultimate goal of the system development. Uh, so we try to use in 
introduce new calculator, new input, like a new, how to say, new water control, soil management, insect care, crop care. But, but farmers or local people may have more life oriented than scientists. And uh, so there is a gap in ideas or principles between scholars, scientists, and the local people. This gap may be one of the causes why the technology developed by the scientists cannot spread into local society. And, and I can say, uh, then what the scientists are not seeing, what is lacking for the scientists when we, we, we develop new technology? I don't know it, but one idea is that this. When, at, at least when we, dis we, we think something about agricultural technology, we are sure that uh, we are paying attention to ecology or global environmental, global environment. This kind of consideration is now, in the, in, now indispensable, yes in addition to local condition. Uh, but okay. this guy, uh, livelihood study, we have to say to we, uh, every farmer here, what we learn from the NABA study in Indonesia is that they have to survive. They or, or the farmer has to feed their family. That is the most important thing for them. If so they, they, they are very much concerned about what is the risk for their life. They try to minimize the risk, try to escape from the risk. That is their first concern, rather than maximize the production. That is a kind of livelihood study, what, and their labor, family labor, yes, okay, but if they have to employ other person, it is, it is all another risk for them. So, so far, we are thinking that the agriculture is a, is a, is a science for agricultural production as well as for example, ecology and environment. But actually, in the field, in the place where agricultural production is going on, it is also a part of livelihood of the farmers. And that perspective, we have to pay much more attention. And, and then we can adjust our technology development to rather, how to say, life-oriented So as I, as, as, I, as I said at the beginning, we have two years more in the Global Fuel Program. I try to mix these two perspectives in the agriculture and the forestry technology study. That is that's all this. So, Muko, Kotchiga, Muko, Kotchiga, Stron, Dosta, you know? Ah, Muko, Kotchiga, Hazard, you know? Ah, Muko, Any 
interesting. Now I'm going to Voilà, c'est bon. Je me rends. ま、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、
それは心の海の判断だと思う。心の海の判断。まあまあ、あのマイクロクレジットなんかやっぱ運用してくれてるからとにかく会社やるときはあのできないあのそういうのを利用すると、まあ、その放題でもできないことはないと思うし、うん、さあでも、まあ、彼らもそれも一つの問題で彼らもやったことないわけよねずっとフォレックスでやってきてる人はだからそれでだからいくら普段かがあのいくらでやったのをモディファイでガーデンタイプみたいなやつでそういうのをやってみたらって推薦してるんだけれどなかなか入れてくれないと。えっじゃあですかプロダクションプロダクションを増やしたいプロダクションを増やすことによってより収入を増やしてもう経済発展をしてっていうこうやっぱりそのストーリーを描くわけやデベロップメントっていうのはデベロップメントするためには収入を増やさなきゃいけないそのためにはプロダクションを増やさなきゃいけないそのためには今のシステムはダメだやっぱりこう改良していかなきゃいけないそれはフォレストタイプで改良じゃなくってガーデンタイプに変え要するにガーデンタイプをの思想を取り入れてくれるわけ補助全体として給料を増やすためには一本一本の企業を増やさなきゃの給料を増やさなきゃあいやでもでもなあの何農業にとって数量増っていうのがやっぱり収入の増加につながるとでまあギャップのところはそしたらギャップの間に別のものを作る方法とかいろいろ考えるわけや。そあれ7年、8年ギャップがあるわけね。だから最初のうちはゴムの木も小さいわけじゃない。だからそこでなんか作物を作ると。そういうそのインタークロッピングの研究もあるわけや。いっぱいある。でだからそれでできますと。で、だからそ。えでで、もう時間かかる。補助する期間えっ、ー、とあれはイクラフはだからだから10年ぐらいじゃないかな最初の、うん、いっぱいいると思うんだよね。期間が短かったからかどうかはちょっと分からへんけどね。期間が短かったんがやっぱり最初から方向性が間違ってたのか。で、僕はやっぱりこう10年やってほとんどついてきてないっていうのは、期間が短かったっていうよりも、やっぱ技術開発の方向性が、どっかがやっぱり農民の考えてることにずれがあって、そうするとやっぱりあんまりこっち向いてくれないと、そういうことではないかと思うけどね。でもなゴムであげる必要はないかもしれない。他はあかんけど。飲みはいろんなことできんねん。で,だでも研究者の方は前ゴムゴムを作るゴムの栽培に関する研究者って言ったらもうそのことしか考えへんわけや。そうなるとですね、やっぱずれが出てくる。
ういうのはなもうすぐ調べるの難しいね聞くやろ農家になんでイクラフのイク,イクラフのデモンストレーションプロットがあるわけやでその隣でゴムやってる人がおるわけやなんでああいうふうにせえへんねんそうするとですな大体帰ってくるのはなもうあんなんやったらもうイノシシに食われるとかさあんなんやったら金かかるとかさあんなんやったら手番かかるとかさ、まあ、そういうこと言い張るわけやでまあそうかなそうでもないかなって感じなんや聞いてる方はであのなんでやったかっていうのは割と聞きやすいんやけどなんでやれへんかってんってなんでやらなあかんねんってこう言われるわけやな聞いたらで,で,でだからそこで研究者っていうかフィールドワークする人の力量が問われるわけや誰も教えてくれへんねんなんで,なんでの農家に広まらなかったかでそこでだから私が考えてるのはイクラフの,その提案っていうのはある意味そのゴムの収量を増やせる可能性はあるいくらの方が今,今やってるよりもそやけどそれは例えばあのガーデンタイプやったらまあ30年経ったらパサッとみんな切らないかんわけやそこでギャップができるとそれからあのまあきっちり手入れせなあかんところがその農家はいろいろ忙しいんだよゴム,ゴ,ムゴムの手入ればっかりしてるわけじゃないんで他のことせなあかんときだから他のことせなあかんでもいくらはまあゴムの優先しなさいってこう言うわけやそんなもんできるかと思うで,で農家が忙しい理由はここでいうそのダイブリフトスタディーを見たら分かるわけやみんなそれぞれ都合があんねん事情がでそのいやいや子供はどっか行ってて誰かは病気で看病せなあかんとかいろいろあるわけやなそういうのをやってるとそのいくらふうに言うようにはできへんとかねでだからその何もそので逆にゴムっていうのはもしかしたらある程度も確実に収入があったらそれで十分やとそれでもうボロ儲けせんでもええと思ってるそうしたらもう今のままこう続けてたらええやんとわわざわざ新しいことやってうまいこといくかどうか分からへん技術を入れてですなたくさん生産を上げようという方向に考えんでもまああのなんて言うたらいいな最後で言ったらルアイルアイって言うんやけど私もルアイルアイって分かるかルアイルアイって言うたらな何て言うんやろなあのぼちぼちやってたらええぼちぼちっていう京都弁会なんかどうしたぼちぼちやってたらええんであって、まあ、そんな感じがあるでなん,な,んな,んなんていうかなやっぱそうここで勝負やっていう時にはオプティマイズして最適化していろんなことやって考えていかなきゃあかんねんけれどあの人生あるいは生活というのはこう勝負せんでもええ場面がいっぱいあるわけねまあ、そこはまあ,ある意味適当にやってたらええと、7分目、8分目ぐらいの力でやってたらええと、でないと勝負のところに力入れへん。で、ゴムは少なくともこのフォレスト,フォレストタイプのゴムっていうのは勝負のゴムではないんだよ。わかるかな。<笑>で,でもね、僕アジアの農業はどうも絶対的にそうやっていう感じなんですよねこれゴムのこと言ってるけれど例えば日本の農業だってそういうもんなわけやあれで勝負してないんだよみんな、まあ、ゴム農業例えば米作りもあるけど息子は役場へ働きに行ってるとあるいはまあこれまああのこのこれ野菜作ってまあ近所の人にあげて親類にも送ってそれでええやんとまあ楽しみやとそういうのもある勝負のそのどうも完全に勝負のための農業ではないと
、で研究者の方は総務であるということを前提にして研究を進めるからねどうしても意識に障害を起こす次アジアの農業がなぜそうなのか決定的にファームサイズなのよ経営規模なのよ日本の経営規模は1ヘクタールもう中国とかベトナム行ったらもうで中国とかベトナム行ったらもっと小さい東アジアは特に小さいタイでも2ヘクタールインドネシアでもそのぐらいで、えー、だからアメリカとかオーストラリアとかに比べると100分の1ぐらいやグローバルグローバリゼーションが進んでいったらもうどうしようもなく勝負できないんだよでもね、それでもやっぱり残ってるっていう事実をやっぱ考えなあかんねん、ね、やっぱりそれはずっとなくなれへんと思うわこれやっぱり完全に勝負完全にマーケットがこうどこでも同じように悪力になっていってあのどこでも同じようなマーケットをシェアしてそこで勝負に出たら絶対負けるでだけどなんか違うアイデアを持ち込むことによって残る可能性あるあるいは違うアイデアを持ち込むによってじゃあその勝負ではない農業がもっとこう成熟化していく可能性があるその農業発展の方向をこうプロダクションばっかりガーッと見ていったらそれはもう最終的にアメリカとかオーストラリアがガーッと勝負勝つんだよそうじゃなくってこうもっといろんな生きる道がありますよっていうことを示すとでそっちの方向へもいろんな技術革新をしていけますよっていうようなことを示すといろんな形で農業が農業っていうか、まあ、農業だけじゃないと思うんだけれど、まあ、農業があの持続してそれはやっぱり全体としてねきっといい方向に行くと思う。それでは終わりにしましょう。あ、なんか聞こえてる。あ、あ、そうか。なんでマイク消されてるの。あら。Can you listen to me? I'm sorry, but I cannot listen to you. Your side, the microphone is muted, so that. Okay. So I cannot accept your question today. Oh, so. <laughs> Okay. Do you have any, any question? Okay. So if you have any question, just send in the, some question through your、uh, the Twitter to the talk type, please. Thank you. Okay, see you. And、uh, next week or night, you know, you're not coming back. Oh. And、uh, I have an、uh, announcement. Next week, we don't have class. Next week, we, we don't have any, no class.、Uh, so the next lecture is on seventh, seventh June.、Oh, pardon? Okay, okay. はい。